In this video, we're going to talk about the delayed free mechanism, which is a mitigation in the kernel and how to bypass it. So basically, there is like a special list of free chunks, which they call leukocyte list. And it's really just a cache of chunks that have recently been requested to be freed by some code. But these chunks aren't actually freed in the real sense which is that they will be treated like any other free chunk. Basically, the kernel heap algorithm can say, oh, someone is requesting a new allocation. Let me first check this leukocyte list to see if something that was recently freed matches the size requested. And this algorithm might pick a chunk candidate from that list instead of using an actual free chunk from the other regular free list. So in that sense, it is like a normal free list, except it has a special role. But there are other scenarios where it acts totally differently from a regular free list. For instance, if the leukocyte list ends up getting full and a new chunk is freed, in a normal scenario, the chunk would be added to the leukocyte list. But because here there is no space left on the leukocyte list, what will happen is that the heap allocator will finally actually free all of the chunks on that leukocyte list. And only at that point can things like coalescing and stuff occur. And this mechanism is called delayed free because the free of the chunks is delayed until the leukocyte list is full. So if you actually want to create a hole in memory, which is basically a free chunk, when this delayed free mechanism is in place. You have to free the chunk that you actually want to free and then free 31 other chunks. And only then, once they are all actually freed from filling all the slots in the leukocyte list, will it actually free the one chunk you are interested to free. So here I have a small anima animation to explain how the delayed free mitigation works. So basically, it just looks like this. If you have a whole bunch of kernismen in memory, when you actually free it the first time, it's technically delay free and it's just on that slot. And then let's say a whole bunch of other frees happen that are not related to us at all. And the delayed free list slots are exhausted. Then only will it free them all and then your chunk is actually freed. In practice, the delayed free and flushing of the leukocyte list is happening very frequently because the kernel is actively using the non-page pool and freeing stuff all the time. So when a K enlistment is freed, it will go through the delayed free list and soon enough, that delayed free list is flushed and so the chunk gets freed. But in a use after free scenario, we not only need to win the race condition, but also we need to make sure we effectively replace that K enlistment free chunk with data we control. So having complete understanding of when the K enlistment chunk is more likely to be freed versus not is actually useful. So we are able to replace the chunk efficiently with data we control. So as a general rule, it's worth knowing that that's this delayed free mechanism exists. You can add in your own functionality into userlearn to ensure that when you do a free, you actually also free lots of other times other stuff so your initial chunk you want to be freed gets freed as soon as possible and when you trigger allocations with data you control these allocations are more likely to replace your interesting chunk and the use after free happens with data you control and so basically anytime you have a user function that you want to use to free a given kernel object you can just have it free like 31 other kernel objects at the same time and so in practice, you can pre-allocate this helper kernel object so you can easily free them whenever you need to trigger the delayed free when you need. And so from now on, anytime you see in a diagram a free hole, you can think of it as a free followed by 31 other frees to take into account the delayed free mechanism. So yeah, I mean, the risk of you not accommodating something like the delayed freed list does exist in theory. You might think you trigger the free and then you try to replace that free k enlistment chunk, but because it's not actually freed freed, 
it's delayed for it. You won't be able to replace the contents. And then let's say you have one the race condition and the use after free occurs in the variable loop. Basically, it will just use the next same RM flink pointer, which is still valid from the old K enlistment contents because it is just a chunk that is in the delayed free list. And so its contents is still untouched. And so basically you were able to win the race condition, trigger the use after free, but no crash is going to occur. And so it is going to loop again as if nothing happened. And you'll have to redo the work of winning the race condition. So you can actually use the use after free for an exploit primitive and stuff. And when you're dealing with something like a race condition that you have to potentially trigger thousands of times before you actually win it, having code that is relatively sure it's going to trigger the free as soon as possible actually helps because it might save you horrors in the long run. 